What's going on internet? IG back again today with another video and today I am looking at potentially the best value for money GPS running watch that you can get in 2018. It's designed well, it performs well, and it has a few interesting tricks up its sleeve that differentiate it from quite a few others on the market, not to mention it's amazing value for money. We're checking out the AmazeFit Pace smart running watch. Let's check it out. Okay, so first things first, shout out to Banggood. They have supplied me with this review unit of the AmazeFit Pace. And uh, the interesting thing about this watch is that first of all, it is a fitness centered watch. So if you are not into anything to do with exercise, um, then it's probably not going to be a lot of use to you. Let me differentiate or let me explain where I think, in my opinion, this product sits. Um, the AmazeFit Pace, I think, is a watch that is designed for people who aren't exactly after a smartwatch, but they are after a fitness-oriented watch, which can give them full GPS tracking. It can play back music over Bluetooth, without any extra device. Basically, it's for those who want to go out and exercise and not have to bother about taking their phone with them. Now, for me and my wife, that's pretty much ideal. And the problem is that, especially here in Australia, the selection of other uh, fitness wearables and smartwatches that we have to choose from force you to make that distinction that you're either going to get an affordable fitness tracker or you're going to have to go all out and get a full-blown smartwatch that is gonna be quite expensive. Now, here's where, what is interesting about this guy. This guy sits barely above what you would normally pay for something like a Fitbit charge or something like that. It sits just a little bit more expensive than those type of wearables, the ones that usually just give you step tracking, notifications, and, uh, and other exercise tracking. Now, the amazing thing about it is that it gives you all of those things that you're used to seeing, uh, and it gives you a solid app and interface to handle all those things, but it also gives you the independence of a GPS chip in the actual device so that you don't have to take your phone with you when you want to uh, go for a ride or go for a run, go for a hike, that kind of thing. All right, so let's talk specs really quickly. Um, and again, I'm basically just drawing all this from straight off the back of the box. Um, so it does activity and sport tracking, obviously. It's got the built-in GPS chip, like I mentioned. It's IP67 water resistant, which means you can take it, you can give it a bit of a splash and, uh, and maybe take it in the shower, but you don't, wanna, uh, you don't wanna hold it underwater for any period of time, so no swimming. Uh, notifications can come through from iOS and Android. It's got a full ceramic case uh, for for scratch resistance and that kind of thing. Um, you've got heart rate monitoring, which can both be intermediate and also 24 seven heart rate monitoring. And you've got four gigabytes of onboard storage for storing music that you can do from either iOS or Android through the app. You also have a rated 11 days of battery life. And I think this is probably one of the most impressive things about this device is when you are just using it as a watch, it is always on, the display is always on, and you get 11 days of battery life with that display always on, which means that it is one of the few devices that has most of the things that most fitness oriented people would want in a device that you don't have to charge every night, nowhere near it. In fact, nine times out of 10 in, in the use case that we've been doing it, and my wife has been wearing it for most of the time, um, she has been able to get pretty easily a week of battery life out of it with intermittent GPS tracking. That's gonna be the thing that really sucks the battery dry, um, but standby time in terms of just being a watch and, and getting notifications occasionally, um, definitely I can attest to at least eight to 10 days of battery life. Now the other thing that I will mention that sets this watch apart from so many others is first of all, the design. The design I think still resembles very closely what you would imagine a watch to look like. It doesn't look like a big ugly fitness tracker and it certainly doesn't look uh, like a square Apple Watch knockoff. It is definitely its own thing. I would say the design language does harken back to the Moto 360 a little bit, especially with the little flat tire at the bottom of the display. But the amazing design choice that they've made here, and I think this is a key differentiator for this particular 
uh, for this particular smart wearable is the transflective display. Now, I think I've said that right, but honestly, it just means that the display is at its core basically an e-ink display, meaning that in bright, bright sunlight, the display actually reflects back to you even stronger rather than becoming more and more difficult to see. So what you'll notice with a lot of phone screens and, and other smartwatches that use LCD displays or even OLED displays is that it, it can get quite difficult to see what's going on on the screen in bright sunlight. Whereas a transflective display will actually, the stronger the sunlight is, the easier it is to see what's going on on the display. Now, what happens in that case when you're in the dark? Well, the, uh, for this device, it does have a backlit uh, display. So it does actually have a, a backlight that sits behind the e-ink display, the color e-ink display, and it shines through. Yes, it is touch sensitive. Yes, it performs pretty smoothly. But unfortunately, especially from the footage that I'm showing you here, you could get the impression that the watch screen is very dim. Now, when you line it up side by side with a more expensive smartwatch, absolutely, it does look dim. There's no way around that. But is it dim enough that it hinders everyday use? In my opinion, not in most cases. Uh, during the day, like right now, I can check it. And yes, it does look dark, especially right out of the gate. But once I'm actually navigating the interface, there's definitely no problems in seeing what words are on the display or what it's actually trying to show me. Um, so all that said, all this disappears when you go outside and that's where this watch really shines, no pun intended. The transreflective display means that, or the transflective, I don't even know how you say that. When you go out in the sun, no problem seeing what's going on on this device at all. And I think that's a big win for this particular market, those who'd be interested in buying this watch. The other thing that I will mention is about the ecosystem, because obviously Amazfit is not a very well-known brand at all. Now, to my understanding, and again, you'll feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. To my understanding, Amazfit is, is loosely associated and, some, and has some input from Xiaomi in terms of Xiaomi, the mobile phone company based in China. Um, and that would explain a lot of the design cues. At least I've been led to believe that maybe Xiaomi have acquired Amazfit. Anyway, the point of the matter is, is that this product actually launched uh, last year um, in selected markets and they didn't have an English uh, version of it but then they launched the Amazfit Pace and the Amazfit Bip and a few other products uh, in English with the proper localization and uh, and what I will say is their support is actually really uh, quite good um, their app is well thought out and also it is uh, the watch has received multiple updates in uh, in about the two months that I've had it, um, which is a good sign for an ecosystem when devices are getting regularly updated, adding features and fixing bugs. So that is also a really good thing to see. Probably my only knocks against this device would be uh, when it comes to usability, you've got to manage your expectations a little bit. When it comes to the smartwatch side of things, this is not going to be the watch for you if you're looking for a true a fully blown smartwatch. Um, it is much more a fitness tracker with a few extra smartwatch type features. If you are after just a watch and something to track all your exercise, including GPS and be able to play back your music, then this is gonna be right solid on the nose. Um, but in terms of navigating the UI and all that kind of thing, it's very simple, very intuitive, but that also means that you don't have a whole lot of options to be able to customize what kind of apps and services you plug into the device. Um, whereas on uh, on the Fitbit Versa, for example, which is in a whole other price category, you can uh, link into other audio uh, services, or maybe you can link into your Strava mm -hmm. account or something like that. On the Amazfit, you are limited to what is in the app, even though what is presented in the app is actually quite good. So, in conclusion, if you are after a very affordable, well-designed and hardy smart device that can track your runs, can track all different types of exercises and give you the granular data feedback that you need, then the Amaze Fit Pace is a fantastic option. Now, what I do recommend you do is if you're interested in getting this product, definitely go and check out the link in the description from Banggood as they supply this review unit and I do recommend them if you're wanting to pick one of these up for yourself. So definitely check the link in the description below. And don't forget to apply the coupon code AMAZE123. That is A-M-A-Z-123 at checkout to receive 40% off. So definitely apply that at checkout to receive a sick discount. 
Guys, that'll be all from me, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful, and uh, I will see you all in the very next video. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.